and we're live. Hi, everyone who's tuning in today. First episode of uh, Spill the Copy with me. Um, we'd like to welcome uh, Mr. So Yu Siang, who is a member of the uh, FINA Technical Open Water Swimming Committee, as well as uh, ASUM, our National Federation's uh, Committee. Uh, he's a former swimmer as well, and is also does masters and is passionate about open water and masters. Um, so we will be joined by Albert a little later. Um, I believe there are some technical issues for him to join us, but uh, he'll join us when he can. So let's uh, maybe start off with uh, our first question. Um, what would the definition of uh, competitive uh, open water be, be swimming, sorry, open water swimming be because um, a lot, there may be a lot of confusion as to what are the different definitions because someone could say that I also race uh, at the same time, but there's a slight difference between the two. If maybe uh, Yusuan can explain to us what the definition would be. Thank you, Leah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for initiating this uh, talk and this chat. And I'm really excited that we can talk about open water swimming because uh, that's my passion now for open water. And personally, I would like to see a bigger growth of uh, open water in uh, Southeast Asia, right? We just had our uh, Sea Games open water swimming competition last year in the Philippines, and there's so much potential for it to grow. But of course, we also would like to emphasize, and I would like to talk a little bit more about the difference between uh, competition, mass swimming competition for open water, and the FINA rules open water swimming competition. Uh, in Southeast Asia, I think the open water swimming scene is quite healthy and uh, quite well developed. We have uh, the Ocean Man uh, in, in Thailand, which is very popular. And I understand that uh, Indonesia will be starting one in Bali. Malaysia had one. And in Philippines, I know that they have a very vibrant uh, open water scene where there are several competitions on. Uh, in Thailand, the National Federation is actually very active. Uh, in Malaysia itself here, we have uh, Swim On uh, doing quite a number of uh, open water mass, uh, open water swimming competitions, which are growing in popularity. And one of the events, the Pulau Perhentian, uh, I think 16 kilometer swim, uh, has been rated as uh, one of the top 50 open water swims in the world, right? So we have a very vibrant mass open water swimming competition. But on my part, I think I would like to emphasize a bit more on the Pina Rules open water swimming competition which uh, is still not developed enough, right? Uh, FINA has already introduced the uh, open water swimming competitions, the World Series. Uh, this year, we're supposed to have 10 uh, series, and four of these lakes were supposed uh, to be in Asia, right, out of the 10. But uh, what we noticed that uh, there are not many swimmers from Southeast Asia taking part in the FINA series competition. It would be great if we can have uh, more swimmers taking part. The difference here is that uh, in, in FINA rules open water swimming, we have a uh, uh, different way of, for example, the start is in the water, either from the platform or in the water. It's not running down uh, from the beach. Okay, We have uh, uh, more technical officials on the water. And in terms of safety protocol, we have a definite set of rules that have to be followed. So we also have a set distances for FINA rules, open water, uh, 5 km. And in the FINA World Championships, we have the 5 k, 10 k, and 25 k. In the Olympics, it's just a marathon or the 10 k. And then, of course, we have the FINA World Junior, which is a 5 k, 7.5, and 10 k, as well as the relays. So, what we would like to see, or personally, I would like to see, is for more open water swimmers from Southeast Asia taking part in the FINA rules open water swimming competition. Why do you think that there seem to be less uh, 
Southeast Asian swimmers taking part in any of the FINA events? Um, right now, I think the, the situation in Southeast Asia is uh, quite peculiar is that uh, most of the national federations would, uh, are, are right now more focused on pool swimming. And open water has not come into the mainstream of the national federations uh, uh, focus at this point of time. Uh, but the potential is there. Definitely the potential is there. We had open water swimming in Palembang in 2011. And it was not until 2017 that we had the open water again in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we had 10K for both men and women. And in Philippines, although we had the open water last year, it was only for the men, right? And I think the focus a lot is always about winning medals. So sometimes if national federations may not be so keen to send their swimmers, but I hope that can change over time because as uh, more and more uh, swimmers are taking part in open water because uh, like in Malaysia, uh, Swim On has been very active in promoting open water among the younger set of uh, swimmers, not just the adult swimmers, but younger swimmers. And uh, we have coaches also coming in to promote water, uh, I mean not water polo, yeah, open water. For example, our ex-national Kevin Yap is already training swimmers in open water. So hopefully over time, we will have uh, more participation. I know for a fact that Thailand is now very active. They have their national competitions uh, every year and they have a series of it. And they also do it in the water and they promote it over, all over the provinces, right? So Thailand is very active in it. Um, Philippines after last year, uh, sea Games, I understand that the Philippines uh, Swimming Federation is also being uh, active now in trying to promote. It's just unfortunate that COVID-19 has come in, but I know that they are going into, into uh, FINA rules, open water. Uh, Indonesia, our friend Albert is already starting Ocean Man. I hope he will also be involved in, in, in uh, the FINA rules, open water swimming competition. And Vietnam who won both the gold and silver last year, I, and they will be the host for SEA Games in, in 2021. I'm sure that they will do open water, and that could be an impetus or uh, motivation for the National Federation in Southeast Asia to push for open water, uh, FINA rules open water. And that would be great for our sport, definitely. I would agree. Um, I would... So you mentioned that World Juniors, there are um, the 5, 7.5, 10, and relays. Um, are they defined by age groups or why are there different um, distances? Okay. okay, this would be very interesting. Uh, okay, uh, the last FINA World Junior was held in Ilat in Israel, right? Uh, from the entries that I saw, uh, we didn't have any swimmers from Southeast Asia and there was no participation at all. Uh, that's a bit sad because actually this is a very good opportunity for the swimmers, the age group open water swimmers to participate and gain experience. Uh, there are three age groups, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18, 19. For the 14, 15 is 5k and the next age group 7.5 and then the 10k for the older age group, 18, 19. Then of course, there's a mixed relays. So this is an opportunity for the swimmers to take part and gain experience in FINA rules, open water swimming competition. And the FINA juniors, world juniors is actually a good opportunity for, for our Southeast Asian uh, national federations to send their open water swimmers to take part. Because uh, I would like to emphasize that open water swimming needs experience. You need to swim. You need to take part in the competitions and gain the experience. Because in open water, you are competing in a very different environment. The environment change. You are actually swimming in, in nature, right? And that's where swimming started. You know, the first Olympics actually, was, uh, the swimming competitions were actually in the sea, in open water. I remember, um I know that back in the day, back in Penang, they used to have the swim lanes in the sea in order for everyone to swim before they built the actual swimming pools. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I Even think that's before, true. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, it is good for 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 our sport if uh, swimmers would come and experience for for themselves because it it benefits both the pool swimmers as well. If they take part and train in open water, it will also benefit them in 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 their in their pool swimming. Uh, right now, you also see quite a number of uh, uh, pool swimmers who are the long distance swimmers taking part in open water swimming competitions. If I recall, the one with the the 1500 uh, FINA World Champion was also was it FINA Junior? I can't remember which one. He also won uh, the FINA Open Water section as well. Uh, he qualified for for Tokyo 2020. Uh, the swimmer mm -hmm. from Italy. In yes, both both uh, disciplines. Yes. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, there is a relay within open water. I mean, I don't think, I mean, locally, we don't tend to have, I mean, locally as in regionally, uh, the relay. Uh, how, do, how does the relay in, in FINA open water work? It's actually over 5K, right? Each swimmer swims 1.25K, uh, right? And you have two, two boys, two girls, or two men, two women in a relay, and they can go in any uh, sequence, can be the guy first or the girl first, Right, but four swimmers uh, take part and they swim the loop. All right, 1.25. They reach up to an area where they, they have the change over, right, touching between the, the elbow and the, the hand. And uh, you have to change over. It's very exciting, it's very interesting. And that's also a good way for open water to, to develop because then you have, uh, each federation will have to want to have more swimmers in order to, to, to have their relay team. That's why I said that. Uh, uh, it will be good if our federations in Southeast Asia, right, look to uh, develop their own open water swimmers and take the opportunity to participate in the FINA World Juniors. There's supposed to be one in Seychelles this year in August, but unfortunately because of the COVID-19 situation, that event has been cancelled. But then again, uh, look at the positive side, it will give the, the South, uh, East Asian Federations more time to prepare and think about it and get a team ready, I mean swimmers ready to go for the FINA World Juniors, you know. It is a very good chance to, to take part and expose uh, swimmers and uh, remembering that uh, in our aquatics family, we have not just pool swimming, we have uh, pool swimming, we have artistic swimming, we have diving, we have high diving, we have water polo, we have masters and we have open water swimming and they're all part of the family so it'll be good if the federations would think about uh, uh, giving the same kind of attention to all the aquatic disciplines not just not just the disciplines that can win medals, yeah, that can win yeah. medals at the sea games but the other the other disciplines as well now other than obviously the um Com those who compete in uh, open water. Let's say there's uh, someone who wished to be involved in, in a competitive open water. What are the roles that they can actually play? And if they need to qualify for these roles, what would they need to do? Uh, whether it's officials or uh, coaches, are, what's, what should they basically look for if they wanted to be more involved in competitive uh, open water? Okay. Uh... For, for those who are involved in the organizing, uh, in the mid-management, I think the most important is to attend the courses that are available. Uh, FINA has courses, the development uh, school and the school for technical officials, uh, certification school for technical officials. The, their respective national federations can apply to FINA for these schools to be held in their country or they can go to another location, to another country and attend these courses and be certified. Uh, these courses or these schools are very competitive, are very comprehensive, and it will give the, 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 the knowledge and the skills needed to, to run these competitions according to the FINA rules and the FINA uh, safety protocols. And that will help in elevating in improving the quality of our open water swimming competitions, making it safer, making it better organized, so that uh, 
uh, swimmers or children or parents who are keen for the children to take part will, will have the confidence for open water to take part in open water swimming. So for technical officials, there are courses available, all right? Uh, either the National Federation apply or they can go to locations where these courses are being held. For example, sometimes a course is being uh, conducted in Thailand. Officials from Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore can go to Thailand and attend. Okay, and uh, of course, they besides that, they can also apply to to FINA for the courses to be held in the country, and that will help to qualify officials to 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 organize uh, open water swimming competitions. Uh, for swimmers, right now, I think. So far, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Thailand has uh, their national competitions uh, very regularly, national open water competitions. Uh, Malaysia just started last year and we were supposed to hold one this year, but again, COVID-19. Uh, Singapore, I believe, also has. Indonesia, I believe they had, but I'm not sure whether they... they, they, they I think it was last year, but Albert, yeah. when he does get on, uh, we can ask yeah. him uh, more about yeah. that. So if, if the national federations have their national open competitions, then I believe that's where the swimmers can, can take part and be qualified to represent their own country. Yeah. What do you think, or not what, um, why do you think that, especially locally, there's a little more reluctance for um, swimmers or parents um, not make, doing both open water and pool swimming? Um, there seems to be some reluctance uh, to give it a try. I mean, a lot of it is whether they should give it a try and see what it's like and, and learn more about themselves, I guess, if they do swim it. Why do you think there's this reluctance uh, to participate? Um, I think, okay, maybe speaking from a, a Malaysian experience, all right? Uh, I've been to Thailand I think the the open water swimming scene there is very vibrant, very active, right? And the National Federation has uh, done a very good job in, in promoting uh, FINA rules open water. Their swimmers have taken part also in the FINA uh, 10K series. Uh, they were in Chun An and I think they were also in, in different places and they took part. Um, if I speak from my own experience in, in Malaysia, it's basically maybe there's not enough uh, exposure in terms of uh, the number of uh, open water swimming competitions for the pool swimmers to take part. And probably also because there's a lack of uh, uh, opportunity for coaches to be exposed to open water swimming races, right? Mm. So maybe there is a lack of uh, experience in this case. But if we, I think if we take the effort to organize more courses, organize more races, it doesn't have to be 10K all the time. It can even be a, a, a 2K race or 5K race, but according to FINA rules, right? And if coaches are exposed to that and their swimmers have a chance to experience with a shorter distances first before going into the 10K, then I believe that will that little steps will help them to uh, gain the confidence go further into the sport, right? Right now, I believe there's not enough opportunity. Now, the interesting thing I would like to say is that actually in Southeast Asia, we have so much coastline. We have a lot of uh, beautiful open water spaces, but we have not taken the opportunity to actually to, to get swimmers out into the open to swim, right? Malaysia is a peninsula. So many places that you can actually uh, do it, I mean, to 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 organize uh, open water competitions. In the Philippines, in Indonesia itself, there's lots of coastlines. And the, 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 the opportunity is there, right? I think the other factor also is uh, most national federations may, may find it uh, a little bit uh, uh, not ready. It's because they, are, they may be thinking that the cost to organize uh, an open water swimming competition to be very high. But uh, I believe that uh, that is a misconception, right? If, if you were to look at it, and usually the first time that you do it, you may have to invest in equipment. But the subsequent years, those same equipment is used, okay? And as it grows, more participants, 
then I believe the cost will actually go down as well. So um, what is, is uh, necessary for us to do right now is actually to, to share, to speak more to coaches, maybe organize more courses, not just uh, in, in Malaysia, but throughout Southeast Asia, we can actually do that, exchange ideas and find how we can go about it. Uh, I believe Philippines, when I was there last year, and I understand from them that they are very keen to move forward uh, to, to train up swimmers to represent Philippines in, in the Vinarus open water. Thailand is already there. Uh, I think Vietnam definitely will, will, will move forward because they are very good long distance swimmers and they just need to trans, transition into open water. Indonesia has uh, their open water swimmers. They are ready, I believe. Um, Singapore, I know they for for one thing they have very strong pool swimmers. They just need to transition into into open water, and if they can't swim in Singapore, come over to Malaysia, <laughs> Indonesia, <laughs> Philippines. <Yeah. laughs> Philip Lau, are you there? <laughs> um, I mean, we we were talking about the the there are certain characteristics that open water swimmers would uh whether it's competitive or otherwise, need to, it would help to have these kind of characteristics um, to, to compete. Because as you were saying, the, in, in, if you were swimming in a FINA sanctioned event, um, there's a completely different, not say completely different, but quite a different environment in which you, you will have to work. It's not necessarily you swim from point A to point B and then you're done. Um, they yes. would be different things. Uh, you'd have to think about strategy. You'd have to. Um, exactly. Yes. When do you, you know, when do you sprint? When do you not sprint? You know, how do you sight? And all these different aspects. But what, from your point of view, um, what characteristics do you think uh, a particularly strong or or uh, open water swimmer should look for? Or let's say kids who are just coming up, or the coaches who are. Uh, wondering about whether their uh, swimmers should go for um, open water swimming. What are the characteristics should they look out for or think to or develop, I should say, really? Uh, that's quite a, quite a difficult uh, question to answer because uh, for those of us who have been in the pool, uh, I remember my first time also because uh, 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 we had uh, this swims off uh, Chinese swimming club behind the club, and then we had the Pesta Pulau Pinang where we swam off Gunny Drive, and then we had our cross channel swim. And if you are a pool swimmer and you have not used to swimming in the sea, it can be quite a scary thing, right? Because in a pool, you can see right to the bottom of the pool, you have a black line to guide you. In open water, you don't have. Right, so it needs a bit of a, a, a courage, a, a bonus to dare to step into the sea. But once you're in there, the, the, the feeling of freedom is tremendous, okay? It's, it's open, you just look out wide, you see the horizon, and it's a different feeling altogether. And you develop a love for the, the, the environment, right? So in this case, I think uh, uh, most kids nowadays, they learn their swimming in the pool, whereas kids uh, previously, I mean, in our time, we learned swimming maybe in the sea. Uh, I had the, the, the opportunity to be in Africa to conduct a course in Niger. And we had our practical in a river, in the Niger River. They only have uh, one workable swimming pool in the whole of that uh, place there. So the kids there actually learn swimming in the river, right? So to them, it's a very natural environment. And they were not thinking about, for us, when we go to a river, we're thinking, are there crocodiles, you know, is it safe and all that? But for them, they already know their environment and they know that's, a, that's how they learn to swim in that river. It's familiar to them. And, yeah. Yes. So, uh, for every kid, maybe it might be different. So for the coach, it has to be a, a gradual introduction to the to the to the uh, to swim and compete 
in a in an open water whether whether it be a, a lake or the sea or a river right so um, in this case i think sometimes they have to be given that opportunity or the experience before they can discover whether they they they, they like it or whether they want to go into that uh, in that in that aquatic discipline do you think that i mean we back in our time um we during off season we were encouraged to we would swim in the sea we would have different uh, activities that kind of cemented the team but obviously we both are from penang so yes being access to to the sea was um much easier although i know nowadays uh, we have way too many jellyfish friends uh too close to shore um but do you think that i mean we have a much shorter off season now compared to uh when when we were swimming um we won't say how long ago that was um that do you think coaches are reluctant to experiment with um different sports to to complement what they were doing in the pool uh whether it's a you know doing like you said river or even just the you know the waterfall or a lake i mean obviously making sure it's safe but or in the sea uh, you know there are different places that you could have access to do you think there's a that they there's a reluctance there to explore different options um as part of their training um i'm not sure whether to say that they are reluctant but i think maybe the opportunity i believe that uh, our coaches especially the younger coaches if they are given the opportunity to explore and to try out different uh, uh, methods, I think they would be open to it. I believe that uh, uh, at this point of time, there is not enough opportunities given in this particular case as, uh, about open water. I think there's not enough opportunities for them to to explore this uh, this this uh, discipline as yet, right? Let's say, for example, um, right now, uh, in the case of uh, Malaysia, we have uh, Swimon organizing the, the mass swims, right? Um, if the coaches were given an opportunity to, to, to send the swimmers to participate, let's say in his uh, 2km swim or even a 1.5k, uh, I believe that many of these coaches will find this very interesting because for one thing, it takes them out of their usual environment, pool environment. And I believe it will be very exciting also for the, for the kids to be able to try something new, right? And uh, in my opinion, I think it's, it's, it's the, the availability and the encouragement that can be given to them from the national federation, from their state federations, for their swimmers or even from the club management for them to organize uh, for their team to go out and take part in open water swim meets. Okay. Um, well, hopefully that uh, we will have some questions during the um, Q and A at the end. So sure. those who are watching, hopefully they will have uh, lots of questions. Uh, other than when can we swim in the pool? Um, because those are the questions that I can't answer. Um, so. I mean, we were talking about the characteristics for open water swimmers um, because, like you said, they don't have the black line to to guide you, and then you can kind of, in a way, suspend thinking. Not entirely, but whereas in an open water race, um, you still have to be aware. I mean, there there is a sense of freedom, right? You're not limited yes. by lane lines. You're you know you've got the whole world in front of you. Um, and you know what well this was kind of a question for Albert because as a coach uh, and as a former swimmer he was I was going to ask him is more of what do you think the skills would they would need uh, if, a, if a young open water swimmer uh, would want to participate in these things 
um, in these races? What sort of skills would they bring, to, they should bring to the table before they even, or as, as part of their journey? Uh, okay, our friend Albert is uh, not here, so maybe I just give you uh, a little bit of my thoughts. But, uh, what, of course, uh, uh, pool swimming and open water is uh, uh, there's there's quite a bit of difference. All right, um, pool swimming you're swimming in a standard environment. All right, uh, there's a black line. You're swimming in your own lane. Open water swimming is a contact sport. Right, you're swimming in a in a in a group you'll be touching each other, there'll be contact with another swimmer. So you have to, to have a, a sense of strategy in how you want to swim your race as well, okay? Whether it's a, in open water swimming, it can be from a point A to a point B, or it can be in loops, right? So if it's in loops, you're going around uh, boys, and you have to have a strategy of how you're gonna swim in, in, in this kind of situation, whether from point A to point B or swimming in loops, let's say five loops for 10K, 2K per loop, or you also have to have the experience and the, the ability to be able to read the currents and the waves because you are subject to the environmental factors and each location can be different. Whereas in pool, the, the pumps are turned off the water is calm, right? In a sea environment, you have to contend with the waves. At the beginning of the race, the waves may be very calm, the sea may be calm, but uh, 10 minutes later, the situation can change, right? So you have to be able to adapt to conditions, right? Um, you're also swimming in a race where it is a longer distance and you need to, you don't have a wall to look at. You don't have the wall markers or the floor markers to look at. You have to learn how to sight from this point to that point, right? And there are different skills that has to be developed for open water swimming. And it's much more dynamic and much more vibrant in terms of uh, a strategy, right? So these are skills that the coach will need to, to introduce to their swimmers as they start to get involved in the sport. Of course, you are, uh, there are other factors that you have to, to train for, but these are the additional skills that uh, uh, an open water swimmer will have to learn uh, to, to be a very good, to be a good uh, and experienced open water swimmer. And that will come from taking part in uh, competitions and more competitions, because as a as, 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 uh, uh, very key, a characteristic of open water is that the environment is different everywhere and it can be the same location but different time of the year it can also be different so you 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 need to to gain the experience by taking part i remember um last year's uh fina uh, world world uh championship the 25k and the weather changed mm -hmm throughout the race it was like really heavy rain was it really heavy rain really windy somewhere it during the, <laughs> the typhoon it's a, was coming in it's going to be a, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be a typhoon yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that that is a typical example of how the conditions change in the race okay when we started the 25k there was a slight drizzle right and as as the race uh, proceeded on we had very strong winds we had rain the visibility was uh, reduced, and the swimmers had to also to change their strategy. So, so these are, are, are situations that you, uh, an open water swimmer, will have to to, to uh, adapt to, because it's it's not a, a fixed environment. The water temperature is different from place to place, and it can also change even in in the same location from at different hours, right? So. As I said, open water is very interesting, very, very interesting. And it, it, it keeps your mind, especially for a coach and also for, for swimmers, and even for the technical officials themselves, they have to be on their toes all the time. You cannot afford to be complacent. 
maybe we can take uh, one or two questions from live chat first uh, before we move on. Hopefully, yes. Albert will be able to join us. Lini, for your question. With uh, coronavirus now in the picture, what challenge will there be in organizing open water races? Okay, good question. We are always looking forward to have our events back. And for us people who are always active, definitely we, we, we are looking forward to uh, race again, to be able to, to compete and with the corona, coronavirus, I think one of the biggest challenges is how to make the races safe uh, in terms of the uh, health point of view. Um, same like for every other event, I believe is uh, social distancing. And uh, this has been discussed, I think, with uh, uh, some uh, event organizers who are also planning to, to restart the events towards the end later part of the year once uh, situations begin to be more stabilized in terms of the control of the coronavirus situation. Uh, the challenges here would probably be uh, setting the arrangements, especially the part where you have the registration, uh, additional tents, uh, seating, arrangements for the coaches as well as the swimmers. Registrations will need to be more orderly. It won't be just like a, 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 a queue of people coming together. You probably have to social distance in registering and doing the body marking, right? Uh, temperature checks may have to be taken. Health declaration may have to be signed, right? And uh, if we talk about the mass swims, uh, the numbers may have to be quite uh, limited because you can't have the the big group of Same swimmers. Number, yes. yes, yes. Probably you have to reduce the number of uh, participants for the race, and I suppose maybe in terms of uh, of uh, the design of the course, maybe the best way to do it will be a point to point race, because then the swimmers will be more spread apart as the race goes on. Right, because uh, if you do it in loop, there's the potential that they will swim in packs and that the swimmers will catch up with each other. So maybe for the initial start, let's say if you want to do an open water race in, in let's say in Malaysia, uh, the best way I suppose may be a point to point race where the swimmers can go in waves and there will be social distancing in the water itself. And then you, you won't have the swimmers coming into packs so closely, right? Uh, they can go in waves of 20 if uh, if it's a bigger venue or bigger location. And then to, uh, a point-to-point -point race, in my opinion, I believe, will, will spread out the swimmers more. Whereas if you have a loop race, then swimmers catch up with each other and they'll come back into packs. So, yeah. It's good. I mean, I think most places around the world have postponed... The majority of their races um i can see a lot more of the virtual races that that um that people have started in the interim um so let's take another question from the live chat <laughs> oh, this one i think shall i answer this one yeah I think you answered this one. Brennan <laughs> <laughs> uh, asks if there are any traditional tips on how to deal with salt mouth. Uh, using minty mouthwash seems to help him, but not, not necessarily a uh, dry, salty throat. Um, salt mouth basically is, is, I mean, a lot of open water swimmers have gone through this, go through this, where your whole mouth feels, and sometimes your tongue will swell uh, if you... Um, depending on the distance of the race that you normally would do um, and where. Um, for me personally and, and through um, friends, what we tend to do is when you do hydrate, uh, we actually rinse our mouth out first. 
um, that assuming that, okay, not in a FINA uh, rules event, uh, depending on the distance, I think the feeding platform would, would, they may or may not be there. Like 5K, there's no feeding uh, platform, right? If I remember correctly. Now, um, for mass swimmers, you can actually take water with you um, in, in your um, safety buoy. And I would rinse your mouth out with water first before you drink. Uh, because if you drink and you haven't rinsed your mouth out, it tends to congregate in your mouth, which adds to the salt water uh, mouth, as you call it, right? Um, it's not often that I've had that um, because that's what other experienced uh, open water uh, swimmers have told me to do. And even in the Brent 10 16K, I made sure I do that. I mean, even before you take, let's say you, you take your gels or anything, rinse your mouth out first. Because what it does is, I mean, you, you can't help it. Sometimes you will swallow salt water. It, it's, that's part of the thing. And if you rinse your mouth out before you eat or you drink, it makes a difference, uh, I find. Um, so it's good. Um, is there any other questions? I think. Oh, uh, do you think uh, Mr. Teal is asking if um, do you think the FINA World Junior or World Series this year will be postponed to next year? Uh, yes, it's already postponed. All the uh, FINA events, uh, open water swimming events for this year has already been postponed or to next year. So uh, the exact dates we don't have yet, but I believe that the calendar will come out soon. So keep training, don't give up. Uh, definitely the events will, will be on, right? As long as uh, uh, the situation, world situation is, is stable, we, we look forward to be back into the, into the races again. What do you think um, in terms of like Malaysian swimmers, right? Um, I mean, we have, obviously we had our first national open water championships last year in uh, Putrajaya, um, yes. which was a fun lake to swim in. Um, and I mean, we, we, it was the beginning, it was a smaller group of uh, swimmers initially and We've noticed slowly in the last year the, the growth of younger swimmers uh, trying to take part or a little more uh, interest in, in open water. And how do you think, um, I was going to say the National Federation um, has done to, to work towards developing uh, open water? Um, our own national federation, not necessarily regionally. Mm, okay. Uh, Trouble for them. <laughs> no, I th I think this uh this is a conversation that we need to have. I believe that uh, uh, like I, I stated before, the the aquatic family consists of. Uh, uh, number of aquatic disciplines and they're all in one family and I believe that all the disciplines need to be taken care of and need to have the kind of focus. But uh, the character characteristics in, in Malaysia, I think not just in Malaysia, but I think in, in, in Southeast Asia as well, a lot of emphasis is always about, about uh, uh, winning honours, about winning medals. Either at uh, like for example, Malaysia is the Malaysia Games, Sukma, right? Maybe in other countries it could also be the same situation. Um, but my opinion is that every discipline should be given that same kind of attention to develop it because kids have their different interests and they have their own different characteristics. Some may like to swim in a pool, some may like to swim in open water, some may prefer diving and, and or even team, team sports like water polo. So giving them an equal opportunity to excel in that particular discipline should be the, the uh, uh, role that the federation or even a state association has to play to promote that uh, those disciplines that are available under our aquatic family. And in case of open water, I 
right now, the Federation has taken a step to organize the, the national competition. Now it comes back to the states. The states should also be developing their state open water swimming competitions. And that, in a small way, can help to create the interest, can help to create the experience needed for the coaches and the swimmers to take part. And we can take do it in small steps. It doesn't have to be straight away uh, a full uh, 10K race or even a 5K race. It can be a uh, 1K race, 2K race. And then from there, as we gain the experience, as officials gain the experience, as state associations gain the experience, then they can grow bigger. Everything has to start from somewhere. But if we don't start, then there's no opportunity for swimmers or coaches or, ex or, or even parents to be exposed to that particular aquatic discipline. So and what you're saying is a dialogue should really happen between national and the various states and, and anyone, uh, yes. basically, if they, they're interested in, in developing the open water scene, as particularly competitively. Yes, yes. Uh, all, all the states, they have some sort of coastline or a lake or a river, right? Uh, maybe it takes a little bit of effort to identify suitable lo locations. But another idea that can develop is sometimes we can collaborate and jointly organize it. For example, uh, PD is a good location. KL and Selangor can combine to the whole uh, uh, open water competition in PD if they don't want to do it in Putrajaya or any other place. You know, so states can combine resources and organize it on a on a scale. And in this part also, I think I like to touch upon Southeast Asia. For example, uh, if federations think that the cost may be too high, I, I believe that if you can combine and do a, a, a national competition, why not? You know in a way it will help to develop the, the sport and have more of our swimmers uh, take part in, in final level competitions. Southeast Asia needs to be represented. Uh, speaking of Southeast Asia, um, Albert is about ready to join us. So, Hi, Albert. Hi, Albert. Hi. It's okay. Welcome. 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 Um, Albert is an uh, Indonesian national swim coach, uh, also a former national swimmer. Um, his accomplishments, accomplishments are quite long, so I won't go too far into them. Um, you also swam open water, as well as obviously being a coach for it now. Um, we were talking about uh, Southeast Asia and um, how our region is, is should, in essence, work together um, to develop the sport, I mean, competitive open water particularly. Um, we had <laughs> to touch on Indonesia's um, basically competitive open water scene and what's happening there, um, because it's relatively newish. I mean, I, if I'm not wrong, you were one of the pioneers in terms of competitive uh, open water swimming. I could be wrong. Um, <laughs> it was a long time ago for me, so. Um, so Basically, could you tell us more about how Indonesia is is developing their competitive open water scene um, from your perspective? Yeah, um, actually, I started to compete to racing in the open water swimming when I was like maybe in sixth grade. So we have a we have a national competition like a way long long time ago. So. But we only com competing like against each other in the nation. I mean, we don't we don't competing like internationally. So, <clears throat> and <clears throat> we have to join the uh, the open water swimming in order to be able to swim in the big clubs like um, like my my clubs. So they they want me to start to be swimming in the like, ocean so we have to so be strong enough and we brave enough to to swim everywhere then so that's that's where i grow growing up i was like my 
my former uh, coach uh, tell me you want to be good you, you have to join the competition in the ocean so is that 4k four kilometers i think in the open water swimming that was, that was and then i i can join the clubs because the club is crowded so we have to i'm in the waiting list back then oh wow so that's that's yeah that's that's my experience and then start from that point and <clears throat> i become a a distant swimmers because everyone wants to swim in the ocean so that means uh you have the, the distant basics like for the for the 1500 and 400 that's where i i started to uh my career in the swimming and for me for my perspective uh, open water is right now it's very famous here yeah. now indonesian wants to we were running the it's too bad because of the COVID, and we have to postpone the uh, ocean man. But other than that, we have a lot of uh, competitions. Right? Like that, see, uh, like in January, we have a open water competition for school, and it's a 400 participate, only for schools wow. for one province wow. for one province. Yeah, wow. The distance like. There is only a 500, starting 500 for the for the beginner, and then uh, 10 kilometers for the for, for the old swimmers, like the competitive swimmers. So that's quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, in Indonesia, it's very big. Yeah, a lot of swimmers want to join, but if you if you like for the registration, we have to pay, then nobody will join. That's the Indonesian, like type of Indonesians. <laughs> they like the free one, but you know, uh, Sounds the enthusiasm is very big. The enthusiasm is very, very big in here, especially when you have a, a prize money. So they will join no matter what, you know. So, but it's like you said before, like it's the cost to host the competition in open water is is very high. It's different with the swimming because swimming is you know you earn money because everyone register and pay but in open water how many you want to like ocean men is to speak but other than that i don't think they we have we, have, we always have a hard time to you know to make it happen for the open water competition the, the last time we have a national competition is only like do you, why uh, do you think that is Sorry? Sorry? Why do you think that is that? Why do you think that is? Um, that the, the, because the obviously you have access. Do you mean the cost? Elia? Hold on, I'll try and fix the stream. Hi, sorry, my internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, my question was, uh, what was my question? Uh, my question is, wh why the, the reluctance? Like, I mean, you had participation of that number from schools. I mean, you have access to the coastline and, and, and I assume lakes. Um, is it purely because, well, it's, it's a relatively new sport, right? In, in Indonesia as well. Could you yeah. hear me? <clears throat> Sorry, oh. I didn't get your, yeah, it's like a, yeah. Cause, not, not really clear. Oh, okay. Um, Stopping it, you go like a you stop and then go stop. And then go. Okay, um, because I switched to hot spotting my phone oh, okay. to make it work. Um, so it's more of, of what are the um obstacles that you face in, in trying to develop your uh, competitive open water scenes? Well, uh, um, 
right right now we have a national competition that i mean uh, for i think malaysia has the uh, one too like uh as a big, like, we call it sport national sport week so it's like one week of competitions there's swimming and it's multi-event multi-event uh, competitions so they have a 3k 5k and 10k so and that's you know uh it's a lot of money to win that 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 game so it's like it's more than it's like three four times then we won the sea games you know we're gonna earn more than sea games so that's why uh, now we start to you know, to to introduce more to the swimmers so they can train the long distance swimmers because it's hard for us to in indonesia during our like a, in, for beginner we only have 50s right 50 spec press free fly and sometimes 100 i am in the 25 meter full and 200 i am in the 50 meter full so no one wants to train the distance you know back in my I era <laughs> yeah back in my era i know um, I was like because I have to train, I have to swim in the ocean before I join the the, the clubs. So everyone wants to be a, a distance swimmer. That's why I'm I first time I was a 1500 swimmers and then when I get older and older then I I swim the 55. So but that's where I be, begin. But different with these days. These days, uh, they think of uh, like more professionally like. I swim because of you know money. In Indonesia, it's, we swim because of money. You know, you got a lot of money. You got you get everything by by winning not only sea games, even in the national competition too. You get a lot of money. So, and people start thinking like it's better to swim a 25, 23 second and get like a what ten. Ten thousand US dollars, then I have to swim like fifteen minutes to get the ten thousand US dollars. So that's or why if you swim a lot of people, water. It's like two hours, or I know, man. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's why now, now you know the, all the coaches start to and and easier to develop the power and the muscle than the this the uh, endurance, right? When you train the endurance, it's, you take too long. And we have a very difficult time to train all the swimmers because of the, especially in Jakarta, you have to the travel and traffic is so bad. So we only have sometimes my clubs, we we have only like a one and a half hours training. We cannot more, like some of them can do two hours, but most of us like one and a half hours in the morning, and they cannot participate our training in the afternoon. Because of the traffic and schools, you know, they've done schools like at 4 p.m. So that's basically the, the I mean, the days that, we, they, that they can train. So by training one and a half hours for six days, you won't be able to swim like a, a good 10 kilometer swim, right? You have to no. swim more than that. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people just, Especially in my clubs, they don't they don't really like choose to swim the the long distance swimmers. So we have to the you know, amount of training that you would need to do um, yeah, is quite why, substantial. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why uh, some of the swimmers are national like Siman. Uh, if you know Igde Siman Sudartawa is living in my house because my house is pretty close to the pool. So some of them that they want to really like really wants to be eager to want to be a champion they come up came up to me and it says um can i can i stay with you coach because my house is too long you know i have a several uh maybe maybe six swimmers that live in my house you know and then one of them is seaman yeah and all six of them are national swimming national swimmers former national swimmers yeah. and these days the only swim seaman still swimming the five of them are already retired but that's how it is i mean it's hard for us 
in Jakarta. In other provinces, it's easier. But still, long distance, I mean, oh, open water swimming is not that popular here. You know, because we cannot, when you watch uh, open water, you like, you watch and then you go gone, right? You don't know when you, when there's day far, you don't know which one are you. You know, <clears throat> in Indonesia, it's very hard because we don't do the drone stuff and to watching the, all the streamers like Vina too. In Vina, you easy because you can watch the TV. But in our country, they don't use that. They don't. They try to minimize the cost. So yeah, happen in in our country. So now we try to. The coach have has to be more involved. I mean, in the swimming, because not only the parents, sometimes the traffic is so bad, just you cannot train them as good as you want to do. You know? That's the problem in our country. Because the credit is so spread out, right? Trying to get to everything is, is a struggle um, at certain times. Yeah. Uh, they want to, sometimes they want to join the big club, you know, the club that you, they, that unproduce all the good swimmers. But then they have difficulties to to come to the practice because of the traffic. So that's what happened. So I have like a what my now is like a five five hundred member, and it's hard for us to you know to really 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 uh, train them unless they they join the national team. Usually when they join the national team, then they become a better and better. That's a problem that we have uh, to develop our uh, open water swim. So what do you think? I mean, uh, we were talking about regional uh, cooperation uh, as to how to further um, work on the, the competitive open water scene or just generally open water scene. Uh, Mr. So was talking about Thailand and how they've, they've managed to, I guess they have a much more mature uh, open water scene right now because they have their national championships. They have provincial. If, if that's right. Oh, really? Um, Albert, you have TV in the background. I think. I think I don't know. What? <laughs> oh, I have a the... Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, Let me. Know. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, so, I mean, Mr. So has, was talking earlier about the regional uh, cooperation and how Thailand is ahead, and then it, because they tried it earlier, um, and Philippines is, is obviously after the games last year. Um, from your point of view, what do you think regional cooperation would mean? Uh, how would you, I mean, what would you be your ideas to put together regional cooperation? Well, um, I don't really, I mean, it's hard for me to, I don't really involve in the, uh, I coach the uh, swimmers, you know, they participate in, the, in all the events, but we never really joining the uh, open water swimming event. I mean, I, I know Thailand, Ma Ma Malaysia is also good, right? In, Slow. you know, <laughs> but Indonesia, we have a we actually we have a, our own country is really, really a, a big event for, for open water, which is not open for, for, uh, Southeast Asian, I mean, all are open for all countries. We have so many open water events. Uh, I don't, I don't know if maybe in the future we can invite all the swimmers. But usually they only invite clubs and uh, maybe schools. Only that because we we like to see the winner is from our country. So that's why we. They don't, they don't need by number. But every year we have at least at least fifteen of them. The open water competition in the in the nation, yeah. 
but I, I don't know if I, how to, how to, you know, how to, to open their mind, you know, all the, to open their, the, because we, it's not usually the, the Propin Federation hosting the games and they don't want to open for the, for the open air for the other country. So we just, we just, all maybe, of us. Maybe, Leah, if I, Albert, if I can, can uh, comment something about this. I think the, the, the help that can be provided if there are more and if the national federations actually pro promote Fina uh, Rules uh, open water swimming competition, uh, as, uh, as you will see that, that uh, the multi-sports events like the Sea Games, Asian Games and uh, the Olympics, they attract a lot of audience, TV audience, right? And right now, even like an uh, online audience, and and if a swimmer from a particular country is represented in that race, I say for example the Olympics, uh, a lot of viewers are online to see, and that helps to promote the sport. Right now, uh, Southeast Asian uh, federations are not putting swimmers into FINA competitions. That's why they are not represented, and that's why the open water swimming scene is 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 not as popular as we would want it to be. You know, uh, for example. Uh, during last SEA Games in uh, Kuala Lumpur 2017, when uh, Malaysia had Heidi Gunn, Heidi qualified for the London Olympics, and that created a lot of uh, uh, interest in the media, in our main, mainstream media, on, on TV, there were interviews, there were reports. You know, that kind of thing helps to elevate, elevate the profile of the sport. And what uh, we need to do right now, actually, for Southeast Asia, for example, when we wanted to do uh, uh, the open water swimming competition uh, last year in Philippines, in in uh, we only had five federations taking part. Uh, you know, uh, okay. Asla from Indonesia actually was a, a bronze medal winner in in two thousand one seven, but it came out fourth in in, in Philippines. Uh, Vietnam didn't take part in 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 two thousand one seven, and they 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 won a gold medal and a silver in Philippines. Malaysia won a gold and a, two goals in both men and women, but they didn't take part in Philippines. You know that the kind of mentality, I mean, the the perception that we yeah. had of of national federations i think if we can do our part to help to 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 to, to uh, maybe change this perception that uh, open water is costly it's actually not it's just a matter of how you want to go about doing it and then secondly i think uh, uh, it benefits the sport as a whole also because not everybody wants to do pool swimming and there are not pool facilities everywhere but the sea is is abundant in southeast asia in indonesia and philippines it's just how that we go about making use of these resources it doesn't have to be a very expensive uh, uh, meet to, to organize uh, i've i've seen what has happened in thailand they they hosted the uh, eighth asian open water swimming championship and they are bidding to host again they have the provincial competitions for open water they even do open water swimming competitions in the pool itself they, they they replicate the cost and they do it you know so and they have very strong support from the national federation because the leadership at the thai swimming federation is very supportive of open water what we need is to 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 get the national federations in southeast asia uh, to to come behind and support this aquatic discipline because it's part and parcel of our aquatic discipline and the growth can be like, like what you've stated at the very beginning there were 400 swimmers taking part in your open water swimming competition you know it's just that they are not exposed to the fina rules competition maybe a massive but eventually let's say if we begin to uh educate and give them the experience of a fina rules competition slowly we will get to the point where they will have the chance to be selected and to represent their country you know mm -hmm. uh, i'm i'm sure vietnam in uh, hanoi 2021 will be having open water okay and it will be good if all the federations in southeast asia that has swimming should be supporting by uh, taking part not just because they can win medal but by supporting the event that will help the sport to grow all right indonesia had one swimmer in philippines they can send two okay. rightfully <laughs> every other nation as well you know yeah uh, and that will help our sport needs to make a comeback <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Albert. <laughs> that's, 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 that's good advice. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk to our federations just to support all the events, the open water events, 
uh, in the future, especially after yeah, the. Yeah, if I don't mind, I just uh, add in again. When we talk about regional com uh, co collaboration, you know, when Indonesia has its national championship, you could probably invite the, the swimmers from other Southeast Asian nations to take part. Likewise, the other Southeast Asian nations, when they have the open water, they can actually also be invited to take part. And that will help the, the swimmers to, to, to uh, I mean, the competition to grow because competition actually helps, helps uh, the, the, the discipline to grow. Yeah. 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 We'll uh, take some questions from the live chat if we can do that. Uh, Beverly is asking will there, is there a compilation of Indonesian open water events for 2021? Is there anywhere we can find out uh, if there are open water events in Indonesia? Like a uh, location? For FINA rules? With, I don't I mean, any any um uh, I don't think so. We the the plus one is, is Ocean Man. <laughs> it's gonna be in December. But next year we uh, we still haven't decided yet. Yeah. Like okay. Oh it's not there yet. All the dates okay. not there yet. So, so there's no central place that we can go and, and find out uh when the next any of the Indonesian uh, events no, will be no, not 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 yet. In, 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 yeah, it's hard for for everyone to try to know what competition we have indonesia website is not it's not work as okay it should be, yeah you know uh, we have to you know we have to get better actually it's different with the uh, singapore like singapore is easy you know to access all the events but not indonesia so that's the problem in here, and Slowly. yeah, and in in Indonesia, like you said, it be sometimes we want to open for the for the South at, at least South Asian countries, but then because because we always involve a uh, marine to to host the open water swimming because they have the, all the access and they help for the for the boats and stuff so. Sometimes they don't. They want them to join also. So if we invite all the good swimmers, then the the winner is gonna be you know not them. I mean they they cannot get. Usually we get the like like the, uh, the winner top twenty. We get all the money, the money because then if we invite more swimmers, then you know the money goes to somewhere someone else. <laughs> They don't want to do that, so they they limited the participant only for uh, Indonesian swimmers. That's what happened. But in the future, I will try to you know, speak to the federation to more involved in this uh, open water competition. But it's awesome. Good. 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 Wait. No, yeah. <laughs> do we have any other questions before we move on? <laughs> ah, delicious. As a swimmer as well as an organizer, Alvin is asking, uh, how do you face the issues of jellyfish? Um, uh, that's, a, that's a very... Yeah. Uh, you, I was swimming like so many times, you know, during my, my era in swimming. I swim since I was sixth grade and I finished my open water swimming in 2004. It was uh, not not that far. I mean, uh, in Wuhan, I swim. I'm racing against um, one of the good swimmers from great swimmers from Malaysia, Tiung, Tiung Anak Magang. Yeah, he was a he was a gold medalist in the 1500 free in Sea Games. Yo. Um, yeah, and then he went to school in Beijing Sport University, and I was training there too for for 2004 Olympic Games, and we had a chance to swim. In that event, I mean, yeah, uh, that was a good, good race between you and me, and we were like talking about jellyfish, like wow, in the in the river, just because we see the red, like red jellyfish, small and so many jellyfish, but but when we swim, like I don't think they 
they're close to us. I mean, we're just swimming and they just went away. I, I don't have, I didn't have experience that I, that stung by jellyfish. So I just, and not many swimmers, I think, get that, get that experience in Indonesia because we already know which part, which part of the like ocean that have so many jellyfish in which ocean that they don't really have it. I mean, maybe just one or two. So we don't have problem in Indonesia. I don't, I don't know if in Malaysia there's a, become a problem or yeah. Like um, yes, yeah, so Elvin is from Penang. Really? So Penang is notorious for jellyfish. It didn't <laughs> used to be that way, but um, in the entire time, I'd never, I mean, when I came back about uh, four years ago, uh, when I started swimming open water, didn't get stung until I swam in Penang two years ago. That was an experience. Um, I mean, generally, our races, um, most of our open water races season that we do have, there aren't that many. Um, you know, from time to time, like you said, it depends where you swim and when you swim. I think um, even when we swam for Hintia in the last two years, uh, we didn't really see jellyfish, um, only the baby ones. And But the warmer the waters got, the more jellyfish appeared um, for us. But uh, my question is swim faster so that you get there before it starts getting warmer and then you... You will. Um, I think jellyfish would be, yeah, it can be where you swim. Um, what I like to use is, you know, you have the lanolin or, or vaseline that so that it doesn't stick to you as much. I mean, obviously, if you are more prone to being allergic to jellyfish or sea mice, you would have more of a reaction than if, if you know. But we use a lot of Vaseline, uh, which is not great for your soups, but you know, rather than jellyfish, you know, soup versus jellyfish, yeah. I think, yeah, you would do something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's one question. Uh, some more questions? I think if, I can, if I can help to answer on this jellyfish, I think it depends a lot of uh, on the organizer whether they want the race to go on. If they if they know that the the water is particularly invested with jellyfish. Um, it's considered a hazard in terms of safety if there's uh, too much jellyfish because, again, uh, swimmers getting stung may have different reactions. Uh, but if the organizer decides to go on with the race, despite knowing that uh, the water has uh, uh, a jellyfish hazard, then uh, precautions have to be taken in terms of uh, uh, medical care that is prepared for jellyfish sting, the medication that has to be there, the uh, medical officers being prepared for swimmers getting getting stung, and uh, Penang we have a cross channel swim where where jellyfish is well known, right? Uh, it's it's become a race that, that those participants who take part they know that they are they are in for jellyfish uh, stings, okay? So the last race that they had they they were very prepared in terms of participants having to wear full suits, right? Be fully covered. Uh, some even with the facial covering and even hand gloves covering, and that became mandatory in order for them to to, to, to take part in the race, right? So it depends. Uh, in 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 some cases, if you know that this is going to be a hazard, you may not even have the race at all in that particular location where where jellyfish is is known to be uh, in abundance. Shall we take the next question? Yeah. Um, it for those who are thinking of taking out open water, is open water swimming riskier than pool swimming? What do you uh, think? Yeah. Um, <laughs> every, every, every sport has risk. Um, each discipline that you do um, has an element of risk. Um, in terms, of, uh, in terms of open water swimming, I think you would have to take into account, um, you don't just, if you've never trained, you never do anything and you just go and enter a race, um, that's probably not the best approach uh, to have um, for any sport, not just open water swimming. Yeah. Um, and in terms of risk, 
I think you will also have to see the organizer or where you are swimming. Um, there is risk, as I mentioned, there's risk in everything, but it can be a calculated risk. Um, you can, you know, you look at your organizer's safety record. What what are their safety procedures? I mean, we're talking about jellyfish and make sure that your medical team has got what is needed to, to help uh, with those kind of situations, whether it's a heart attack with, you know, or someone's uh, whatever, uh, so that they have, a, a, if they have a good safety record, um, obviously you try not to swim in the sea or anywhere when it's monsoon, um, you know. So risk is, is, is relative. Um, I think perhaps people may think of it as riskier because it's so open, right? Yeah. It, you're tied to suddenly the tide will change or the current will change direction or, um, the storm, like, you know, uh, Fina Worlds we were talking about earlier, where the weather, well, Typhoon came to visit. Um, and it, it, it's calculated risk. I mean, like when we started swimming again, uh, when open water swimming was allowed during uh, MCO. And you still look at tides, you know, when is the best time to swim in terms of tides? You look at the weather, uh, you know, uh, I mean, sometimes we look at whether it's full moon, not full moon, you know, when, when that, and so that you try and get as best conditions as you can to swim, uh, more so if you are not as experienced a uh, swimmer. Uh, I think I like was saying every, every sport has a risk and it should be more calculated risk. Um, marginally, I mean, it's not like pool swimming, you don't have risk of your own. I mean, even the Olympics have the lifeguard by the pool, right? I mean, you would consider that how, I mean, the meme that goes around with the lifeguard by the Olympians um, is, is somewhat ironic, but, you know, anything can happen. Uh, it's a risk that you would do. And um, I said, if you look at calculated risk as much as you can in terms of open water swimming, I think that works. What do you think, Albert? Sorry, because there's so many people now in my house. So they were so You're busy. having a party, Albert. Yeah, because um, we newborn nephew. Newborn oh, nephew. Okay. congratulations <laughs> to you. Yeah. So, um, sorry about that. I told him to not to it's talk too loud, but they're still screaming, you know. And <laughs> for me, it's, I think it's, it's about the same. Yeah, all the the risks that the open water swimming and um, I mean, uh, what did I say? So, uh, I mean, you you swum both pool and open water. I mean, yeah. from like yeah. both of us have all three of us uh have done this at some stage uh we're still doing it um you should still make your comeback Albert. I keep telling you <laughs> you should have a race yeah. with uh the young again you know i i didn't train for very very long time you know <laughs> yep the the young mm -hmm. swam um last year in yeah, open water uh in the one of our it's like same time as as national horror they had a mass race after like 20 minutes apart and yeah dion swam that too so you two oh, should really? you know <laughs> yeah make a comeback yeah but dion. i mean late, lately i just dion i don't know what what year dion to retired but i swimming very long in my career starting like when i was eight and i retired in the age of 32. So these days I'm I rather doing other sports than than swimming for the for training. I mean I like running, I like playing basketball better. I know, you know, better than watching all the the water every day, morning and afternoon. <laughs> yeah, because you're a coach. But, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what do you I, think I like it's risky swim. having Riskier, I think so. 
from my point of view. Uh, open water swimming is, of course. How about how about in Malaysia? Like, they, they don't really uh, want to swim in the ocean, right? I I think the 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 issue about perception of uh, swimming in open water is riskier or more dangerous. I think that again is a perception. Uh, yeah. Safety comes to everybody uh, being concerned about their personal safety. When you you are aware of uh, safety protocols, when you're aware of your own personal safety, I think then you become the the risk is not so so. Uh, uh, prevalent or so obvious in the sense that let's say if you go to a pool, a pool complex and there are broken tiles and uh, drain gratings that will break when you step on it, that is also a risk. You know, that is risk because basically if you if you go to a place where it's not properly maintained, properly taken care of, you're putting yourself in danger in swimming in that particular place, in that particular pool. Likewise, I say if you go to the open ocean and you know that that place has a, a lot of uh, rocks and there's a, a plenty of jellyfish, knowing that, then you would not put it, put yourself in a position of danger, right? But if you know that place is a, a lagoon, is is particularly safe, and that there are people watching you and you're going in a group and you have swimming partners who swim with you and you're you're putting safety protocols in place, then. Are uh, you, 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 you reducing the risk? Likewise, same thing also. If you go into a pool and jump in, knowing very well that you're alone, there's no lifeguard, and and the water is murky, it's not well uh, sanitized. You pose yourself a health risk. So I think the issue of risk again comes back to the the person who takes part in a particular activity, whether it's swimming, whether it's walking on the road, whether it's running. You have to be conscious about your own safety. You have to be conscious about your safety protocols. So likewise, in 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 in, in uh, open water swimming, that's why FINA takes a very very strong position about safety protocols. That's why safety protocols in place and uh, officials who, uh, who take part in our school, they they are they are exposed or they are put in through these uh, the safety protocols so that they are aware that uh, safety plays a very uh, uh, prominent role in the activities that we do. And we apply that in every other thing that we do, walking on the road, swimming in a, in a pool, or even in, in any place, even at home, uh, whether children are, are, are like now MCO, uh, a lot of people are, are left at home. And the, the prevalent thing now is that you try to have those wading pools. That can be a danger itself, although it's only one inch of water, even one and a half feet of water, one feet of water. If a toddler is inside there, the mother is not watching, you know, the poor kid may, may, you know, have a accident or, you know. So the thing is, safety protocols has to be ingrained into our minds. We have to be aware in any activity, I would say. So to say this is riskier, that is riskier, I think uh, uh, that actually depends. It's a relative, yeah. yeah. I think we'll take... Yeah, but, but uh, it's hard, it's hard for... Oh. No, I've been talking about that. But it's hard to... It's hard to uh, to tell all the parents about this risk, right? They they will think the parents will think like, of course, in the pool is safer than the than the oceans, right? That's the problem. Don't you think that's the so, problem? Yeah, yeah or, that's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, because, I mean, if we, yeah. That's right because I I know that as uh, the the life saving society of Malaysia, uh, and, and our swim schools here have been promoting on water safety as well because the prevalence of mobile phones that is a danger in itself because uh, parents can be on their mobile phones and the kids are swimming in the pool in the water and the parents are not watching their kids even though the kid is in the wading pool there's only one and a half feet of water but the mother is busy or the parent is busy texting on the phone or watching something on the phone and the kid is there swimming and they face some difficulty that itself is also a danger you know it's a risk so yeah. i think uh, teaching about well, water safety is important everywhere yeah. not just in the sea but also in the pool itself even at home anywhere yeah even uh, at home, anywhere. Hmm. let's take a couple more questions so Brennan is asking, will there be any open water events done virtually within the Southeast Asian region, uh, much like virtual events in other sports disciplines? Um, I know that overseas, um, oh, I can't remember which country now, um, they've started a virtual open water race um, 
I was in the WAUSA, the World Open Water Swimming Association. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, that's right. They mentioned in there that they were looking to see if uh, anyone would want to do virtual events, like mini races, uh, things like that. Um, and I know that Masters, uh, US, the US Masters, um, they also were looking at a virtual event uh, where, you know, because now they have limited access to pools as well as to the sea or, or lakes or wherever they are. So they, they would like to, they, I think their events were um, short distances because obviously everybody hasn't been training enough to do 10. I don't think I could do <laughs> five anymore. Um, so what do you think? I mean, it doesn't look like necessarily um, we will have many races uh, on the horizon this year. I mean, I know uh, Abbas mentioned that Ocean Man Bali should be in December, but um, what do you think about virtual events? Just to keep people, you know, it's a, a way to connect um, and swim whatever distance that you can. It's kind of fun. I, what do you guys think? I think uh, <laughs> I think to have a virtual uh, open water event will be quite hard, you know, uh, unless you put a screen of a, 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 a nice uh, yeah. ocean and then you are on a bench and you, you try to do that. But let's. I, but I think right now, let's say if we talk about virtual events, I think there are courses on. Uh, for sure, Fina has uh, live uh, live sessions with the. Uh, uh, the most recent one was, was the Brazilian coach of uh, uh, Kunha. So he did a very yeah a very good session and uh, fitness sessions with uh, some open water swimmers. Uh, that's done by Fina live uh, live uh, events, and I believe the other like uh, what Leah said, Wausa also has, and probably some other organizations just need to search. But if you're talking about virtual races, I I, I, I doubt it. You know. Maybe for pool swimming there is, but uh, open water, I don't think there is. Well, what, what, how the virtual events uh, usually work, like for other sports, is they, you know, majority will have sports watches of some kind. Um, that's how a lot of them would key in, they log in and they connect um, that way. Um, so Waza, I, well, within the Waza group, I was taking a look at, um, I'll try and put some links up uh, later in the, the comments when we're done. Um, they were calling for people to think about doing virtual events for open water swimming. Um, and whether regionally um, we would do something like that. I think, I don't know, it'd be kind of fun. But logistically, I'm not sure how it works. Um, you know, was as a, a Obviously, the different open water uh, associations and groups uh, worldwide have uh, different advantages to us, I think. Um, I'm not sure how it works. That is a good question and something to think about. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr. So knows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes. Is, uh, do you think it yes. would be advantageous for the National Federation to work with private open water organizers to build open water events in the region? Yes, uh, I, I think so. I think that is a, a, a very good direction to go for, for the National Federations to work with uh, private organizers. It also happens uh, in many of the open water races worldwide. Uh, the National Federation works with uh, private uh, promoters, we call them, to do open water races because sometimes these events, there are logistics involved and uh, the National Federations may not have the resources to do that. But working together with a, a, a private organizer who already has the resources, that helps to reduce costs and that helps to put uh, uh, all the stakeholders together to have a very good event. For example, in, in uh, uh, the the Previously, I think we were in Italy for the Capri Napoli race. It was a private promoter who worked together with the Italian Swimming Federation and they organized a very good race. And they had TV broadcasters to come in, uh, sponsors to come in. 
and it helped to promote the event very well. And it was a very good race done. And the private organizer actually had the experience to do it. Sometimes the National Federation may not have the personnel or the resources to do it, but a private organizer can. But the National Federation, what they have, they have the technical expertise in terms of supplying the technical officials, in, in terms of uh, ensuring that the race complies with the rules that are necessary. For example, if they are doing a, a FINA rules race, then the National Federation will be able to advise the national, uh, the private organizer how to go about it. Um, Ocean Man is actually a very popular race, uh, Albert. And if actually Ocean Man can help in terms of promoting FINA rules race, that will be fantastic because I'm sure the, the Ocean Man has a, has a network and they also have the resources to do it. And that will help a lot in, in, in promoting the, the, the sport uh, and having more swimmers qualified to go for FINA Rules Race, the FINA uh, Marathon Series, the FINA World Junior Championships and all the other events. And that will help to promote the profile of the sport. Yes, so Moy, I would definitely say yes, it is good. The National Federation should work with uh, uh, private organizers. Um, we'll take some yeah, more. I'm, I think I'm we have a couple more. I agree. Oh, you... Sorry, Albert. Okay. okay. I agree with it. I'm sure we would all agree. That's why, agree actually, that's why we want to. That's why we want to host the uh, Ocean Man because Ocean Man is is worldwide, right? So we just, yes, yes. you know, that's maybe the first. Yeah, that's the first time that we can open. The Indonesian eyes, you know, to to watch and see. Uh, yeah. This is a big event. Oh. Of open yeah, yeah. If if I don't mind, just add in, uh, Albert, is that uh, in in Thailand the Ocean Man is very popular, and they they work together with the Thai Swimming Federation. The Thai Swimming Federation, if I'm not mistaken, they they provide the technical officials for the event. So it, it's very good. What's happening in Thailand is actually very good, very popular, and very well organized. Okay. So hope to see in well, Bali that it will happen. <laughs> Leah will be. Yeah, actually, actually, <laughs> actually, we we only working. Actually, we are only working with the uh, Bali Swimming Federation for the ocean. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. Probably we don't involve yeah, yeah. the ocean. Okay. Maybe like, the next year. Yeah. We, 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 we'll see how yeah. it goes. It'd be good. It's having a dialogue. I mean, start at least starting a dialogue, uh, or some you know additional awareness would. It's a step forward, right? right now. Uh, next question. Uh, Lini is asking, um, will there be disadvantages for those staying in land bound states? How would they train for open water? Um, I mean, for the most part, I think the majority of open water swimmers will train in the pool anyway. Um, and primarily you train in the pool. Uh, unfortunately, if you're landlocked, you will have to travel further afield in order to race or to get actual open water experience. I mean, open water is not necessarily sea. Uh, it could be lake, uh, it could river. be river, but please do check um, that, you know, and we were talking about calculated risk, but always check that it's still safe to swim um and i mean there's always avenues somewhere that um you could expand your open water uh experience but for training wise i mean you generally will train in a pool um i mean all of us have done that right um we train in the pool i mean i know we haven't had access to the pool for quite <laughs> some time um there are different ways it's it's you have to be more resourceful i think um yeah. if you are in a landlocked um area as it were um next question any more goodness me um quilling is asking taking into consideration the context of national natural disasters what are the safety measures for disaster preparedness during an open water event in Indonesia? Okay. Albert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> National disaster means like um, the earthquake, like that? I guess, if, if, yeah, so if an earthquake or a tsunami happens, 
Yeah, during, <laughs> well, if a tsunami happened during an open water event, I think um, none of us would be really. <laughs> um, I mean, it's an it's interesting. It's hard to thing. say about, about the net. I mean, it's, it's like earthquake coming and tsunami coming. We wouldn't know, right? Yeah. If it's happened, then I don't know. Some some will survive. Some. <laughs> I mean, we can't, out, yeah. you, we can't out swim the tsunami. So. <laughs> I think um, maybe if I can help in that question, yeah. Okay. I think in in terms of uh, disasters, natural disasters, and all that, I think in before you organize an event you need to do a risk assessment of a, a particular location where an event is supposed to be held. The risk assessment then would cover what kind of risk that uh, the organizer will probably face in that location, that period of time in that year. For example, if you know that uh, in, in, in east, east Coast of Malaysia, towards the later part of the year, you will have the monsoons coming in. Definitely then you wouldn't want to, to intentionally organize an, an open water event then during that time of the year at a particular location, knowing very well that when you organize it, there's a very high 80% chance of rain and thunderstorms, right? So um, the risk assessment will help the organizer in, 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 in preparing or in assessing whether they should be having the event in the first place or not. If you decide to hold an event, then, then that means you have not, the organizer has not uh, done the risk, risk assessment well enough knowing very well that there's a potential natural disaster that is going to happen at that particular, the high chance, I won't say that it will happen, a high chance that it will happen. So you would not want to be doing that, right? So if you know, for example, that uh, uh, there's uh, the, the, the national uh, what called weather agency of that particular country has forecasted, for example, that there's a potential that there's going to be a volcanic eruption on one of the islands in Indonesia and nearby that's where your location for the, the the open water swim is event the organizer would then take into consideration this warning and probably will have made the decision not to hold the event and maybe to relocate it to in another place that would be my my this uh, uh, answer to that question okay it would be not you be yep. yeah but for, for weather, weather is, is easy I mean, I mean, for me, it's like, yeah, of course, we're all thinking about like the, the weather and stuff. But when you, say, when you say it's like tsunami, tsunami has come like, you know, it's unpredictable, right? It just come. Even you already, you know, prepare everything. Then if tsunami comes, it's gonna, gonna be a disaster. That's, that's how it's right? gonna roll, that's right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's part of the risk assessment. Yeah. That means in, 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 in their event, that something unexpected or, or expected and or, or unexpected happens, what were the safety protocols that were already in place to mitigate this kind of risk? Mm. For example, that uh, um, what we had in Guangzhou was there were typhoon. There was a typhoon coming in, and the the weather agency actually did warn us about that. So what we we actually did was we had the uh, uh, lifeguards, uh, coastal boats all ready uh, for for uh, abandonment of the race in case that uh, we we can't con uh, control the situation. So definitely, the organizers would be prepared in that kind of instance uh, for 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 an eventual uh, 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 risk or threat that may happen during the the race itself. Uh, sometimes things are unforeseen, so. Uh, is being prepared for it. I think like before you choose a particular, as you were saying, um, location or venue for a race or a, even a swim or a particular event, the organizers themselves, I think, uh, I remember in the FINA technical officials thing that they mentioned that there is a, a process to follow before you organize any event, whether it's the FINA rules or, or uh, anything else. And like you're saying risk assessment, they'll look at condi right? conditions, the environment, uh, that time of the year. Um, I mean, up to a point, I mean, earthquakes, they can predict, Neh! but if it happens, it happens, right? Uh, Weather-wise, it's a probably uh, in a better position to, to do so. But yeah, calculated risk. 
so long as as you were saying that there are enough safety protocols to in place to reduce risk or like as you're saying mitigate the uh risk that is there i think that's pretty much it um yeah interesting question Willing. thank you yes yes, yes. lin is asking will there be open water life-saving races that's interesting um that's i think national life saving society has their annual competitions yes, yes. Yes. Australia, has. Australia has, yeah, and, yeah, and they're really, yeah. really yes. competitive, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, for yeah. us, I'm not sure. Um, that would be an interesting point for... I, I, if I remember correctly, I think uh, the National Life Saving Society of Malaysia has organized before. Uh, I think it was in Penang of the of Chinese Swimming Club or Penang Swimming Club. They, they did it before. Uh, those races were held in the open open sea because one of the components of life saving also involves a uh, life saving uh, in the sea in the ocean. So, like uh, uh, using um, uh, techniques that suitable for for water safety and life saving in the ocean. So there there is, but I'm not sure whether they do it every year. But if you contact, uh, if Lini can contact the National Life Saving Society of Malaysia, I believe they they will have the the, the answer for her. Yeah, because it doesn't come under our purview for, for life saving. <laughs> um, I think that they had like clinics and, and something else last year in Sabah. Was it last year? After a ah, while, yeah, the years, Sabah, yes, life saving society. Went, went together, Sabah has, yes, yes, yes. Sabah yes. had um, courses yes, Sabah more had, than yeah. races, right? Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, um, you can, I mean, yeah, the National Life Saving Society probably would be in a much better place to answer yes, that yes, question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you guys, you guys better than, than our countries. Then. We don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's start, Albert. Start. No. I Albert is things to visit Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that in our countries. Mm. Not, I mean, like you said open water wise access and and the awareness is not quite there. I mean, Bali, I'm sure has their. Um, life-saving surf uh yeah oh for surf yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 because not for they would have not for swimming yeah i don't know uh i've never swum in bali so i couldn't tell you uh, <laughs> yeah we won't talk about december um so i think that was our last question um thank you uh thank you Siang and albert for joining me in our first episode uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time. Thank you for answering all our questions and very diverse group of questions. And uh, we hope to see each other outside of the computer screen, um, yes. whether it's uh, pools or somewhere else. I'm still asking Albert to come back to masters and open water. Yes. Yeah. Well, he should. He should. Yeah. He should. <laughs> Albert, Felix, and <laughs> yeah, maybe you just brother, get healed. Yes, yeah. yeah, we should have a special Albert and Dion race. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone, yeah, for yeah, tuning in. I'll see you next week. Okay, see thank you. you. Bye. Bye.